Hello, uh, welcome to another episode in the PWA series. So in this episode, we look at on-demand caching. So until now, uh, what we have seen is the cache API being used only in the service worker, but we can actually use cache API in the normal JavaScript as well. That is part of a normal web page. So that gives an opportunity to actually cache resources through some manual intervention from the user. So things will be more clear when we take a look at the app and get to the coding part. So let's just get started with it. So we are back on the Chrome browser. So we now have a save button here to actually do save the product data on a button click. So like I mentioned before, until now we have been doing all the caching in the service worker. So with the static and the dynamic caching and we have the assets stored in the respective caches there. So what we want with the on-demand caching is when the user clicks on the save button, we actually want to save that product data for later use. So the idea of this feature is that it could save a version of this product data that could be referenced later because there's a possibility that the product data might change over time and for whatever might be the interest of the user, be it the product image or the description, if the user wants just this version of the data stored someplace so as to reference it later, the save button enables that. So it is similar to like bookmarking page or even saving a post like on Instagram, but it is more like a download because we don't want the saved version to be in sync with the original product data. So because it will be out of sync, uh, we want it to be stored in a separate collection. And one other thing to note here is caches are designed to actually store resources like a CSS file and image. So most of the time just files. But what we have with the product data here, it's more like an object. So currently we have the local storage, which could store such data, the products collection as an object, but cache is not an appropriate place for storing such an object. So what we'll do is we'll actually store just the image of the product in a separate cache instance and we'll have a separate collection for uh, the saved products in the local storage just like for uh, the favorites and other collections. And when we actually implement some backend, we would be storing the data remotely in a server or the cloud. And also in the future, we'll be using a better option compared to local storage for storing objects like the product data here. So that is actually IndexedDB. So it is like a database, but that is for another episode and for the future. For now, because we want to demonstrate the on-demand caching, when we click the save button here, we'll just be storing the image associated with the product in the cache and the actual data will be stored in the local storage. So that is how we want to store the data when we click the save button in the local storage and the cache. Additionally, we actually want to toggle, meaning any products that were saved previously would also be unsaved with a toggle. So accordingly, either we add, add the data or we remove the data. So that is the functionality or the feature we're going for to demonstrate the on-demand caching. So things will make more sense when we start writing code. So let's get to Visual Studio Code and get cracking. We're back on Visual Studio Code. So since we're dealing with the new collection, let's start with app.js where we have implemented the local storage API. If you're interested in knowing how this API was implemented, you can check out my other video. The link should be on the screen. Okay, so we'll be adding a new entry here for the saved entries. So let's name it save for later. So that will be the key and also the value, but the lower case. Next, we need to get the current state of the collection. So that is done with the get method from the local storage. So let's just copy paste that and change it to save it for later. And also the name here. Now that we have the current state at the time of page load, we can use that to initialize with appropriate data. So that is again this method, which is used for the other collections too. So let's just copy and paste it. So we give the name here, we change it to it for later. Then we use the current state for later collection data. And if it is valid, we just choose the current data. If not, we just initialize it to an empty object. So let's save it. So now that we have the appropriate code in place to initialize the collection in local storage, we can access it in different web pages through JavaScript. So let's go to favorites uh, listing. So we'll have to add an event handler for the click event of the save button. So let's get to that part of the code. 
it's right here we can see the comment too and this is the button element that we need to work on so here we'll actually add a non-click event handler so on click we have a method inside as the event handler and we get back that click event as input so in here we actually need to check if the current product is already part of the saved for later collection or not so based on that current state we'll take appropriate action like adding or removing the item so we have method in local storage api so let is saved equals so the local storage method is is item in local storage collection so that's actually in app.js so let me quickly show that to you so we scroll up a bit so here is the method that we're going to use is item in local storage collection so we get input as the collection name and the product id so accordingly does some search and returns a boolean so back to the favorites so in here we give the input of the collection name which is save for later so we can use collection names and then save for later so that should return a boolean and also we need to give the product id product id so do take some time to go over the code base if you're not able to follow along so the link to uh, the github repo should be in the description so now based on that state if it is already saved then with the button click we need to remove it from the local storage and also from the cache so remember because we're going for that uh, toggle feature and if an item is already saved we remove it and if it is not part of the collection we add it so we'll have a new statement here to implement the logic so is saved we remove the item from the collection so we have a method for that remove item from collection in local storage so it takes the name of the collection and also the product ID as input. So it is also in the app.js. So again, the collection name would be saved for later. We get the product ID. And we'll also update the text on the button. So here we have the text content save. So I think we need to make a change here as well because the default is given as save, but we actually need to set it based on its current state. So let's fix that. We'll have the same uh, method there, method call there. So we'll directly use it there. Use the ternary operator. So if it is present, then we have the text as unsave because uh, that is what will happen when you click on the button. And if it is not already part of the collection, then we have save there. Let's put on the next line make it more readable so we'll update that in uh, this statement here too so we'll set the same text content and because we're removing it here we'll set the text to save because next time when you click on it it will be added back to the collection so we set it to save and if it is not yet saved we add it to the collection so let me just copy paste this and we'll accordingly make changes so the arguments would remain the same same collection and the product id just the name of the method would be changing so now we're adding it so we have an add method for that so add new item to collection in local storage so this is also an app.js and then since uh, we are now adding it the text content should change to unsaved because on the next click it should be removed from the collection so after this we need to make some additional change to the css here because if we're actually adding a save button icon, let me quickly go back to the Chrome browser. So in here, with the save text, we also have the icon for the save. So we need to add that as well, each time we set the content of that button. So back to VS Code. So we'll just add this line of code as well, so that the element stays consistent with the toggle. So this is one part. We are adding and removing the item from the collection in the local storage. Now we need to do the on-demand cache. So here again, we check the state. So first we'll open the cache, get a reference to that instance. So we'll use the caches API here. So we'll also check if the caches API is supported in the browser. So we can do that with another check. So if caches in window. So the window essentially means the browser here. So let me scroll up a bit. So here we first get access to a cache instance. So we'll open a new cache because you want saved entries in a separate cache instance. So we'll access the cache API from within the normal JavaScript here. 
cache is start open let's call it zero for later and then in the next line you can get access to that instance in the then method because open method returns a promise here with the cache instance so we'll create that method here the then once we have access to that cache instance, we need to check uh, whether the product entry is part of the saved for later cache instance or not. So we can use that is saved flag, is saved. In here, we'll write the logic to remove an entry because remember we're trying to go for the toggle functionality where if the entry is already saved and you click on the button, it will be unsaved, meaning it will be removed from the cache instance. So logic to remove the product entry from the cache instance and also we'll display a message in a snack bar. Display message in a snack bar. Snackbar is uh, a web element which is also one of the predefined components in the material design light. So we'll be using that and else it means it's not saved yet. So we add it to the cache instance. So add the product entry to the cache instance and also display the message in a snackbar. However, the code can get complicated with the nesting of the snack bar code. So I've already refactored the code. Let me copy paste that and we'll then go over the code. So I think that will be more easier. Let's scroll up. So we have the code here, both for saved and unsaved cases. So first we're actually creating an object with information on the cache, like the instance of the cache, and remember that we're just storing the request to the product's image URL in the cache. So after the cache related data, then we have the snack bar related data. So this is the message of the snack bar. So we are embedding the product name in there, then the timeout. So for how long the snack bar has to be displayed. So this is in milliseconds. So that is three seconds effectively. Next is the action handler data. So the snack bar itself can have some button to perform an action. So we're doing undo here. If at all we want to reverse the action performed with the save button click. So since we're doing the remove operation here with uh, the e saved case, we will be adding it back to the cache instance. So all the relevant data like uh, the product ID, the product data itself, and also the appropriate messages. So all of this data is then passed along to perform the actual add or remove operation and display the snack bar. So that is refactored into a separate method. So let's take a look at it as well. Scroll up, I've uh, copy pasted those methods as well. So here is the cache add remove method. So we have an input flag is add based on which the appropriate cache add or remove operation can be performed. So if it is add, we do the add operation because we are getting access to that cache reference through that input uh, object data. And accordingly, uh, we display a snack bar that particular operation. So same with the delete here and uh, the snack bar. So this method internally uses another method to create that snack bar data. So let's take a look at that as well. We scroll up a bit it's right above so here it creates the actual data like with the message timeout taking all that information from the past in data and in the action handler uh, we then use that to perform that undo operation that we talked about like a delete and add and with the appropriate message data so this is the favorites listing we also need to perform this code changes in product listing as well so let me finish up those changes and i'll be right back okay the changes are complete in product listing.js as well so the reason we have to make our changes in two different files is because we're not using any templating framework so an enhancement would be using a templating framework or even writing a class to promote code reusability we should probably be done as part of future enhancements but for now this is the state of our app so now we have uh, done the changes in the web pages through the JavaScript. But there is an additional file that we need to edit, which is the service worker. So since we're adding a new cache instance, uh, we need to handle that in the service worker as well. So here, uh, we'll add another entry, save it for later. And we'll just uh, give it the name save it for later because that was the name given in uh, the product listing as well when we opened the cache. Let me quickly go there. Yeah, right here. So we have given saved for later here as well. So the thing is, we won't be able to access the data in the service worker back in the normal web pages here. So for that reason, we have to make sure that the names are the same in both places. 
So we go in here and we give the same name. Let's say later. We need to give a comma there. Names match, so we're good. But we won't be giving any uh, versioning for this cache because the contents of this cache entirely depend on the user action. So the user decides whether a product entry is saved to the cache or not. So the service worker doesn't have to worry with the cache versioning. However, we need to make sure that the cache doesn't get deleted uh, when a new version of service worker is installed in uh, the activity event handler. So we'll add additional condition here to include that new cache as well. So better readability, why don't we put it on the next slide? So we'll have another add condition here and the cache list will you save it for later. So that should ensure that the user driven cache doesn't get deleted with the activate event. So those are all the code changes that we need for this on-demand caching. So let me update the cache version as well because we updated uh, app.js and other uh, javascript files so that will ensure that the latest version of those files is cached so let's save this also i've uh, added a new page to list all the saved items so we have a new javascript file uh, saved listing.js and also we have a new folder to navigate to that page that can list the saved items so we have the appropriate uh, index.html as well now go to the chrome browser and test it out so for the service worker section refresh it so you might have to refresh it multiple times for the service worker to take effect Okay, we have the page properly loaded. So we have the uh, static assets, dynamic assets here. And if we click on the local storage, so we have the products currently loaded. So now let's try uh, clicking on the save button here. So when we click on the save button, yeah, we have that unsave and also we have that indication. We have the new cache here, which actually stored the image of the shoes. So it seems like our logic is working and we're able to cache resources on demand so let's add another entry so on save so we were able to add the retro camera as well so we're able to add entries to the local storage and also the cache here now let's try to unsave to delete an entry uh, we see that the delete is also happening properly and if you go to the local storage we have entry removed there as well so the code seems to be running fine with the appropriate behavior just to check out the page for saved items as well uh, let's add another item and let's go to the save for later page so previously we only had home and favorites we have a new page now just to list the saved items let's go to that page page is partially loaded so let's keep reloading until all the assets are loaded on the page okay the page is fully loaded and we see both the saved items listed on the page here so let's try and saving from here and see if that deletes the entry when you do unsave so we see the message that it's removed we go to the save it for later you only see the shoes and also in the cache go to save it for later we only see the shoes so all the code seems to be working in the new page and also the other pages that's it for this video i hope you found the example helpful with the, the on-demand caching done with the save button click so like i said that feature it's kind of similar to downloading or saving the content for later like an instagram post or even on pinterest where you mark some designs that interest you. So just that here instead of just an image uh, we have a product data however we have a better storage option for object data like the product data which is index db so in the future episodes we'll look at how to work with index db to add data locally on the browser but first we need to add the backend uh, for our app so that the data is stored remotely on a different server so we'll be using firebase for that and once we have the backend in place then we'll fetch the data from the network and store it in the index db however the part of adding that backend will be outside this PWS series and published as a separate video on this channel. So stay tuned because there is more content in the pipeline. If you found this video helpful, do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.